Hey everyone, it's uh, Josh Davies here with HitFilm. This is what we're going to be looking at today, how to create these missile trails in either version of the software. This is our HitFilm YouTube channel, FXOM HitFilm. If you haven't had a look at it, make sure you do. There's loads of tutorials there and other information. And if you like it, please subscribe. So uh, let's get started. So as we're working on a visual effects shot, the first thing we want to do is go to New, Composite Shot, and move into the layer timeline where you create your special effects. If we go and find the missile smoke and drop it on, it's going to tell us that we want a camera because this is a 3D effect so it needs a camera to be able to work out where it is. Now if we don't animate the smoke all we end up with is a smoke blob like this. There are two ways to animate the smoke. One of them's more simple and quite restrictive and the other one's very powerful so we'll look at the simple method first. So let's get the smoke up on the screen. Now if we use these controls here, it's actually going to transform the whole object that the smoke exists in. It's not going to animate the position of the smoke, so you won't get a smoke trail, you'll just move everything. What we need to do is go into the smoke itself, and then go into the general and alter this property, the position here. So if we uh, move it to the left, set a keyframe, move down the timeline a bit and move it right, here you go, we have our smoke moving. Now if you were to have actually just used these settings on here or in the transform because they're the same thing it'll actually move the whole effect and you wouldn't want to do that. Now this way of animating it with the position here it's fairly abstract you can't see where it's going but for these simple movements from one place to another in a straight line it is fairly easy but the more powerful option is to build a rig and that's what we'll try and do now. So to begin with, let's go back to the start, let's uh, reset the general and uh, reset the transform and then we're back where we started. What we're going to be using is this attach to layer property, but we have nothing to attach it to at the moment. So first, let's make the smoke invisible and let's create a point. Now you'll notice this point is only in 2D and it's important that it's in 3D. So let's click on this, make it 3D and then we'll go up to this tool here, the orbit tool, and we'll rotate around then back to the arrow tool and we can see that our point is there sitting there in 3D. We're going to use this point to control the distance of our missile so let's bring it towards the camera maybe quite close and we'll go in set the position keyframe move a little along the timeline and then we're going to actually move it let's move it really far into the distance let's do that here so now we can see that this point is shooting off into the distance. So we're going to name this point that we created distance. Let's just right click on that, rename. And then we're going to create another point, new layer point. And we're going to change this to a 3D point. And then we're going to parent it to the distance. But before I do that, you'll notice, let me zoom out a little that our distance point is here and our new point is here. If I just parent this object to this object it will always stay relative to it. So for example, there we go. Now if I select both points you'll see they move together. What we actually want is our new point to sit exactly on top of our distance point so we need to go into its properties and here you can see this is the offset between the two points. So if we change this to zero and then we select our two points they're actually sitting on top of each other now. This is what we want. The next thing is to use this new point to do something cool. We're going to make it spin round the other point. So let's rename it Spinner. What we have to do is reposition it relative to our first point. So what we're going to do is we're going to move it out to the side. So now, again if I select both points, you'll see that they're moving in parallel to each other. What we're going to do is set a keyframe on the position of our new point. Let's look for where we set the other keyframe. And then we're going to make it so they actually converge. So let's set that to zero. Now you'll see that our points come together in the distance. The next task is to make the spinner spin around the distance point. So how we do that is we go back to the distance point, go back to the first keyframe. We're going to set a keyframe on rotation Z. Then we're going to jump forward and we're going to make that spin around three times. 
So if we look at that, you can see it's spinning around pretty quickly. But now if we look at our spinner, because it's parented to that, we can see that it's doing all sorts of crazy spinning around. So what is this going to look like when we attach our smoke to it? Let's find out. Let's go down to our smoke effect. Switch him on again so we can see him. There he is. Not doing anything. But if we go into the general settings, attach to layer, and now select the spinner, you'll straight away see that the smoke is doing something far more interesting. So where do you go from here? Well, I think we need to tweak the smoke. I don't think it looks that great. It's kind of patchy. So let's orbit around the effect so we get a better look at it. Looks a bit better now. Let's go to the smoke section and let's increase the density. Okay, that definitely looks better. And the size variation. Now it looks more sort of more like smoke, more drifty. What else could we do? Well, we could add a light source to the front of our missile, which is what Andrew Kramer does in his tutorials and what we've done in those videos before. So let's demonstrate how you might do that. So the beauty of using the rig is that we can reuse it with the flare on the front of this. So what we'll do is go new and we'll select a grade layer. Now let's switch off the floor plane here so we can see what we're dealing with. Let's go up to here, find the light flare and drag that onto the grade layer. So all we need to do now is alter the settings on this flare. So let's go to the light flare. Let's change its type. That doesn't look like a missile at all. Let's choose the flashlight LED. That's much better. Go to the hot spot position and then choose the spinner. Now you'll notice this is offset from the front of where our smoke is coming from. That's because this center position is not zero and zero. Now it's on the front. This creates a really convincing effect and it even works if we start spinning around the 3D scene because even though the lens flare is a 2D layer, the actual point that it's linking to is a 3D point. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If we can be at any further assistance, please come to the HitFilm forums and ask questions there and we'll do our best to help. If you enjoyed the tutorial as well, it'd be fantastic if you could subscribe to our channel and you'll see all the latest content we produce. Thanks a lot.